There are many types of liver disease, which can be caused by infections, inherited conditions, obesity, and misuse of alcohol. Over time, liver disease may lead to scarring and more serious complications. So, an early treatment can help heal the damage and prevent a more serious progression such as liver failure. Your liver is your body's second largest organ, after the skin. It sits just under your ribcage on the right side and is about the size of a football. The liver separates nutrients and wastes as they move through your digestive system. It also produces bile, a substance that carries toxins out of your body and aids in digestion of fats. Liver disease, or hepatic disease, is any of many diseases of the liver. If long-lasting it is termed chronic liver disease. Although the diseases differ in detail, liver diseases often have features in common. Over time, liver disease can cause cirrhosis. As more scar tissue replaces healthy liver tissue, the liver can no longer function properly. Left untreated, liver disease can lead to liver failure and liver cancer. Overall, about 1 in 10 Americans have some type of liver disease. About 5.5 million people in the U.S. have chronic liver disease or cirrhosis. Some types of liver disease are becoming more common in the U.S. because they are related to rising rates of obesity. An estimated 20% to 30% of adults have excess fat in their liver, a condition called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Different types of liver disease result from different causes. Fasciolosis is a parasitic worm infection caused by the common liver fluke, Fasciola hepatica, as well as by Fasciola gigantica. The disease is a plant-borne. It affects humans, but its main host are cattle and sheep. The course of Fasciolosis in humans has four main phases. Incubation phase, which starts from the ingestion of metasarcari to the appearance of the first symptoms. And the invasive or acute phase, where the fluke migrates up to the bile ducts. This phase is a result of mechanical destruction of the hepatic tissue and the peritoneum by migrating juvenile flukes, causing localized or generalized toxic and allergic reactions. The major symptoms of this phase are hepatomegaly and splenomegaly, ascites, anemia, jaundice and fever. And there are also the latent phase and chronic or obstructive phase as the third and fourth phases. Hepatitis is the term used to describe inflammation of the liver. It's usually the result of a viral infection or liver damage caused by drinking alcohol. Viral infections like hepatitis A, hepatitis B, and hepatitis C are diseases caused by a viral infection from the hepatovirus. It is estimated that 862,000 people are living with hepatitis B, while a 2.4 million people are living with hepatitis C. As for hepatitis A, about 24,900 new infections were recorded in 2018. And that's because of two factors. The first one is that hepatitis A is a non-chronic disease. And second is that not all people may notice its symptoms. Hepatitis A is spread when a person ingests fecal matter, even in microscopic amounts from contact with objects, food, or drinks contaminated by feces from an infected person. While hepatitis B is primarily spread when blood or certain other body fluids from a person infected with the hepatitis B virus enters the body of someone who is not infected. Like newborns of an infected mother having sex with an infected person or sharing equipment that has been contaminated with blood from an infected person. On the other hand, hepatitis C is spread only when blood from a person infected with the hepatitis C virus enters the body of someone who is not infected. Like sharing equipment that has been contaminated with blood from an infected person, such as needles and syringes. Or receiving a blood transfusion or organ transplant. When your immune system mistakenly attacks your liver, it can cause autoimmune liver diseases. These include primary biliary cholangitis and autoimmune hepatitis. Symptoms of autoimmune hepatitis can range from none to mild to severe. It is common to have no symptoms at the beginning. 
Some people may not have symptoms when they are diagnosed, but they may develop them later. Some of which are feeling more tired than normal or becoming tired easily, mild joint or muscle pains, usually these are worse in the morning, low appetite and weight loss, feeling sick, itching, skin rash, and excessive hair growth. More severe symptoms, which usually occur late in the disease, may include the buildup of fluid in the legs, feet and ankles, or buildup of fluid in the abdomen, confusion, bruising, abnormal blood vessels on the skin, and jaundice, a condition in which the whites of the eyes go yellow and, in more severe cases, the skin also turns yellow. Some liver problems develop because of a genetic condition. Inherited liver diseases include Wilson disease and hemochromatosis. Wilson's disease is a rare inherited disorder that causes copper to accumulate in your liver, brain, and other vital organs. Most people with Wilson's disease are diagnosed between the ages of 5 and 35, but it can affect younger and older people. Copper plays a key role in the development of healthy nerves, bones, collagen and the skin pigment melanin. Normally, copper is absorbed from your food, and excess is excreted through a substance produced in your bile. But in people with Wilson's disease, copper isn't eliminated properly and instead accumulates, possibly to a life-threatening level. Wilson's disease is present at birth, but signs and symptoms don't appear until the copper builds up in the brain, liver or other organs. Signs and symptoms vary depending on the parts of your body affected by the disease, which may include a golden brown eye discoloration, known as Kaiser Fleischer rings. Also it can cause problems with speech, swallowing or physical coordination and uncontrolled movements or muscle stiffness. When abnormal cells multiply in the liver, it may develop tumors. These tumors may be benign or malignant. Benign tumors are not cancerous and are rarely life-threatening. They're localized, which means they don't typically affect nearby tissue or spread to other parts of the body. While malignant or cancerous tumors can spread into nearby tissue, glands and other parts of the body, cancerous tumors can come back after treatment. These tumors can be life-threatening. Naturally occurring DNA damages, mostly due to cellular metabolism and the properties of DNA in water at body temperatures occur at a rate of more than 60,000 new damages per human cell per day. DNA repair proteins are often activated when DNA has sustained damage. However, excessive DNA damage can initiate apoptosis, a programmed cell death. If the level of DNA damage exceeds the repair capacity, apoptosis can prevent cells with excess DNA damage from undergoing mutagenesis and progression to cancer. Additional DNA damages can arise from exposure to exogenous agents. Tobacco smoke causes increased exogenous DNA damage, and these DNA damages are the likely cause of lung cancer due to smoking. UV light from solar radiation causes DNA damage leading to melanoma. While Helicobacter pylori infection produces high levels of reactive oxygen species that damage DNA and contributes to gastric cancer. Also bile acids, at high levels in the colon of humans eating a high-fat diet, cause DNA damage and contribute to colon cancer. Alcohol consumption is one of the leading causes of liver damage. When liver damage has happened due to alcohol, it's called alcoholic fatty liver disease. Alcoholic fatty liver disease is also called hepatic stetosis. It happens when fat begins to build up within your liver. Consuming too much alcohol can inhibit the breakdown of fats in the liver, causing fat accumulation. People with alcoholic fatty liver disease typically have no symptoms. When symptoms are present, they can include discomfort in the area of the liver, fatigue, and unexplained weight loss. Another type of fatty liver disease, known as non-alcoholic fatty liver or hepatic stetocysis, a reversible condition where large vacuoles of triglyceride fat accumulate in liver cells. Non-alcoholic fatty liver is becoming more common as rates of obesity and diabetes rise. It is increasingly common around the world, especially in Western nations. In the United States, it is the most common form of chronic liver disease, affecting about one quarter of the population. 
Experts don't know exactly why some people accumulate fat in the liver while others do not. Similarly, there is limited understanding of why some fatty livers develop inflammation that progresses to cirrhosis. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is linked to overweight or obesity, insulin resistance, high blood sugar, indicating prediabetes or type 2 diabetes, and high levels of fats, particularly triglycerides. Cirrhosis is the formation of fibrous tissue in the place of liver cells that have died due to a variety of causes, including viral hepatitis, alcohol overconsumption, and other forms of liver toxicity. Cirrhosis is the main cause of liver failure. While liver failure is the inability of the liver to perform its normal synthetic and metabolic functions as part of normal physiology. And there are two forms that can be recognized acute liver failure and chronic liver failure. Chronic liver failure usually occurs in the context of cirrhosis itself, potentially the result of many possible causes, such as excessive alcohol intake, hepatitis B or C, autoimmune, hereditary and metabolic causes such as iron or copper overload, steatohepatitis or non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Acute liver failure is defined as the rapid development of hepatocellular dysfunction, specifically coagulopathy and mental status changes or encephalopathy in a patient without known prior liver disease. The disease process is associated with the development of a coagulopathy of liver and clinically apparent altered level of consciousness due to hepatic encephalopathy. Hepatic encephalopathy is an altered level of consciousness as a result of liver failure. It can occur in those with acute or chronic liver disease. The underlying mechanism is believed to involve the buildup of ammonia in the blood, a substance that is normally removed by the liver. In healthy subjects, nitrogen-containing compounds from the intestine, generated by gut bacteria from food, are transported by the portal vein to the liver where 80 to 90 percent are metabolized through the urea cycle and excreted immediately. This process is impaired in hepatic encephalopathy either because the hepatocytes are incapable of metabolizing the waste products, or because portal venous blood bypasses the liver through a collateral circulation. Nitrogenous waste products accumulate in the systemic circulation. The most important waste product is ammonia. This small molecule crosses the blood-brain barrier and is absorbed and metabolized by the astrocytes, a population of cells in the brain that constitutes 30% of the cerebral cortex. Astrocytes use ammonia when synthesizing glutamine from glutamate. The increased levels of glutamine lead to an increase in osmotic pressure in the astrocytes, which become swollen. There is increased activity of the inhibitory gamma aminobutyric acid GABA system, and the energy supply to other brain cells is decreased. And this can be thought of as an example of brain edema of the cytotoxic type. 